Today you'll see a couple of pants that are super easy to sew. They pull up, neat, they fit amazingly. They have a wide leg, but they're not wide at the top. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from liftingpinsandneedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing. And today I have my versions of the Walk Boldly wide leg pants from Pattern Emporium. It's a brand new pattern and I've been excited to share mine. These pants are so easy to sew and whip up. They fit amazingly. The fitting features of them are that they are pull up. They have a waistband with an elastic inside, one and a half inches. On the front you can sew a fake fly or not. It's your choice if you want to add that on. And then on the front you can put patch pockets, in this case they're called cargo pockets. Or you could do one where there's a well opening with the pocket bag sewn behind it. I love that type of pocket. And then there's jean style pockets that have a curved opening. On the back you have two darts on each leg for shaping. I love that. <laughs> and then you can either sew a well pocket on the back that is a different technique to the one on the front or you can put a patch pocket. There's quite a few pocket options. Of course, if your print is super busy and you don't want any pockets at all, don't put any pockets at all. The pockets are always optional. They are designed to be full length and on the pattern piece, you'll see cut lines there for if you're short, regular or tall height. But really, if you wanted to make these cropped, you know, three quarters capri shorts, you can do whatever you want. All you will need to do was trim the new hem allowance for the shape that you get there. So you can get different lengths if you really want to, but they are designed to be long. For the waistline heights, you can either do a mid-rise which is a little below your belly button-ish, or a high rise would, would be at the natural waist. Whenever Pattern Emporium releases a new pattern, they just don't put that pattern on sale. It's other ones that go with it as well. So if you click on the link that I'll leave you below, it is an affiliate link, it will take you to our release page where you'll see the Walk Boldly pants, plus all the other patterns that can go with it, lots of tops. I have made quite a few of those already and have tutorials about them. All of these are 15% off through Monday the 4th of September at noon in Australia, but that's like Sunday night over here, just so you know. And you'll find my affiliate link in the description box and in the pinned comment if you want to support the work that I do here on YouTube. It doesn't cost you anything extra to buy through my link, but I receive a small commission. For fabric, you want fabric that has stretch, you want knit fabric, this won't work with woven, it won't even work with a stretch woven. Stretch woven fabric could stretch horizontally but stretches zero vertically, so that's not gonna work. You do need knit fabric. There are knit fabrics that stretch a lot horizontally but vertically they just have a bit of give. Maybe if you measured it, it would be 10, 15%. In that case, if your fabric is like that, you want to really check that horizontally it stretches at least 50% so that everything will compensate there. If your fabric stretches the same, you know, up and down everywhere, then you want 30 to 40% stretch at least. You can have more, but at least that. There's a wide range of neat fabrics you can use here, but you do need to take into account the way that these fabrics function in real life. So if you wanted to use modal, rayon, bamboo spandex, just take into account that those don't have great recovery. They also have an immense amount of vertical stretch. So whatever you make, it's gonna end up longer. You know, if you make these pants, your crotch is gonna end up here lower everything <laughs> so in, if i use that type of fabric i'd probably use the medium rise and it would end up hitting my natural waist just because of how much this fabric stretches it's a quite flimsy it wouldn't be my first choice i would not make these pants with that type of fabric but maybe i would if i just wanted them for lounging and i really didn't care if they just deformed vertically some ITY fabric also behaves in a similar way, but not ITY is the same. At least in my collection, I have some ITY which is more firm, that doesn't have that much vertical stretch as others. So just look at your fabric and just go from there. <laughs> I think fabrics that are gonna work really well are heavier cotton lycra, double brush poly would work perfectly, Ponte Roma. Now not all Ponte Roma is the same. Make sure it stretches vertically because there are some types that don't stretch at all. And in my case, I like Ponte Roma that is rayon based. It just has a nicer drape while keeping it medium weight. Scuba, athletic knits would work, stretch velvet, asterisk here because some stretch velvets don't stretch at all vertically. 
I did give a description of requirements when I started talking about the fabric. That is what's most important and what you need to keep in mind to evaluate you if your fabric is going to work rather than the type of fabric because not all of, all of them are weaved the same. This goes for French terry as well. I've had French terry fabrics that don't stretch at all. They have no spandex but they're weaved like French terry and there's others that do stretch a lot. So take into account the stretch requirements um, and you'll be okay when you choose your fabric rather than just seeing the fabric type and just blindly going there without checking the properties of your fabric. Other than your main fabric, you need one and a half inch elastic to go inside the waistband. But just to be sneaky here, <laughs> I've done yoga waistbands because I just find them so comfortable to wear and I'm really, really accustomed to just putting those on everything. The sizing goes from 40 to 30 Australian up to a 58 and 3 quarter inch hip. As I mentioned before, the fit is semi-fitted from sort of the full hip and below and above is nicely fitted. I just made my size, I chose it based on my full hip, which is an 18 Australian. It's Just remember that Australian sizes are not the same as US sizes or other sizes. Don't get hung up on that, just look at the size chart, find your measurements and whatever size that corresponds to. That's what it is. <laughs> and I didn't make any changes to my pattern. I just chose the higher rise, the longer length. I did actually make a pair of shorts that are eight in inch seam. Those were my prototype, like muslin, as you will. I made them wearable just to confirm that everything was good because it usually is. <laughs> I hoped it was wearable, so I used a little scrap of an athletic knit I had. I wasn't going to be too upset if they weren't wearable. I could wear them around the house but they turned out perfect, just perfect, perfect. And I'm happy I did that because then I can pull out my amazing knit fabrics. There are athletic knits, they're a bit pricey, so I would want them to fit well. I don't think I wasted my time doing a shorts version as a test. Here's my muslin of my Walk Boldly pants and I just cut them as shorts, comfy, comfy shorts. This is an athletic knit. I cut them with an eight inch inseam and just threw the hem allowance a little differently there so it would make sense and I'm very happy with the fit I can definitely just go ahead and make my pants I did substitute the original waistband with an elastic inside for a yoga waistband it doesn't really affect the fit it's still the same rise here I have the high rise option and the front rise is perfect it's at the back I think the fit is perfect as well you can see the darts there give it some shaping it fits really well there's nothing I would change I always choose the natural waist option because of my body shape. If you have any curve from the waist to the hips, even if you wanted to wear your pants low rise or mid rise, they're going to end up hiking up to your waist anyway, especially if there's elastic there, because it's just going to want to move up to a smaller area and live there. So I think if you have a more rectangular body shape or apple shape, I think you sort of can choose where you want them to hit. I think everyone should find their waist placement where they like it and you think it's comfortable. Mine is at the natural waist. Really when there's waist high options, I'll choose the highest one. These are easy, easy to put together. I have filmed some sewing for you, mainly focused on the pockets, but the pattern construction, it, it's so, so easy. This is my front leg and for my version I'm going to be doing the front welt pocket that goes around that area. This is going to be a pocket bag that is going to be sewn onto the pant after the welt pocket opening is sewn there. So that is that piece right here. And over here there's a little rectangle that you need to interface. I'll show you that in a second in more detail because I filmed it. Now I've cut a yoga waistband instead. I'm not using the original waistband because the original waistband has an elastic. And I just find a yoga waistband much more comfortable. The only difference is this one's a little wider. This is five inches. And then the length of the waistband, I just measure my waist and take about three inches so that I have three inches of negative ease around my waist. That means that this waistband is going to be smaller than the actual pants. But you've seen me do that before. For me, this is just so easy and so comfortable. And then I don't need an elastic inside and it just feels like you're wearing nothing. And I love that feeling. So... That's why I tend to use a yoga waistband on a lot of things. <laughs> and then these are the actual world pocket pieces. This is just a little rectangle. It's a neat fabric. When you look at the rectangle like this across, you need to make sure that for your knit, the lowest part of the stretch is along this area. So if you look at this, this only has a small amount of give. Most of the stretch is going this way. 
but on this welt piece you need it to be like this when you look at the pattern piece you're going to have this grain line mark most knit fabrics stretch least going down vertically parallel to the selvage so that's why I've cut it out like that just as per the instructions so that it stretches just a tiny bit now if your fabric is extremely stretchy or super flimsy or lighter weight I would be going a step further and interfacing it so that it suppresses the stretch completely I think this one's okay because it just has that vertical give it's not super super stretchy in this direction and it's a nice medium weight structured knit so I don't feel like I need interfacing there but just think about your fabric I would not do this type of detail with ITY or rayon spandex I think it's just way too flimsy and all the pocket detail is going to weigh the pant leg down it's just not the right type of fabric for it so I would keep these well pocket details for fabrics that are at least medium weight with a bit more structure I am here at the ironing board getting ready to sew the well pocket on the front so there's a few marks you need to do first this is one of my front legs here that you can see the crotch and this is the hip area and if you're going to sew this version you're going to have this pattern piece which is actually the pattern piece for the pocket that goes sewn behind the welt so here is my piece i've already cut out my fabric put that aside but on this piece you're going to have a little rectangle marked there printed out you have to cut that out because that's going to serve as a mark of where the welt's going to go so you cut out sort of like a window <laughs> i've placed it there and then just marked inside with a friction pen right over here my friction pen is in its last drops of ink this little piece is super important so this is the interfacing you need to cut i like to eliminate every stretch factor when i'm doing a well on knit fabric so i'm using non-stretch interfacing very lightweight and i'm just going to place this right on top of my mark right there and fuse it on you can barely see it because it's white and the wrong side of my fabric is white this is the other leg the other hip and for this one all you need to do is flip your pattern piece around like this so it's mirrored and I've done the same little mark right there I have my rectangle and here I have my other rectangle of interfacing that I'm going to fuse onto there and don't skip the interfacing if you skip it your welt pocket is going to stretch out while you sew it it's going to sag when you wear it it's just not going to be right once that's there in this area we have no stretch going anywhere because the interfacing has suppressed the stretch in all of this area as you can see we have little marks so the actual welt pocket is going to be sewn within the interfaced area right there this is the back leg over here around the waist you're going to have some darts for the back you can add a patch pocket or a different type of welt pocket i'm going to be going with the patch pockets here i will eventually do the welt pocket and film it for you i just do not have time at this point in time up here on the waist of the back legs you'll see two darts i've marked those with a friction pen you can sew darts with knit fabrics i've always said it don't think you can't i love the shape it gives at the back like this so make sure you mark them nice and accurately with something that can be erasable for me the most accurate way is with a friction pen here because i get a clean clean line and i can't get that with chalk or any other tool so that's what i've done here i'm going to be using the back patch pocket and i've just got my piece here there's little notches and that signifies where this is going to be folded in like this later so just below that I started cutting a little wider but from then on I did cut around the pattern piece and I marked that line here across my fabric right there and I want to fuse this on before cutting the rest off because there's always a risk especially with knits the glue on the interfacing can react with it and just make it a tiny bit smaller in that area so this is a type of block fusing that I do for knits and wovens now that my top section is interfaced then I'll go ahead and cut out the rest and then I'll have my pouch pocket done I sew my darts in the exact same way whether it's a woven or a knit I always start with a dart tip and just fiddle with my sewing machine until I know my needle is going to go right on the edge of the fabric I don't back tuck and I just start sewing and I start sewing up towards the wider end of the dart it's just that with a knit it sort of moves around it's a little more fiddly than with a woven but you can totally do it the important thing is here just to let the feed dogs do their thing don't push and stretch on the fabric so that the darts don't end up looking wavy there are two darts per leg so four darts in total all the same at the bottom because we didn't back tuck we do need to reinforce and it's just as easy as getting these threads and doing two little knots they always look very neat you don't get any dimpling or pulling and because you had the opportunity to regulate where that needle went in right on the edge there when you started i have hand basted these on right here <laughs> there is a mark on the pattern to guide you where to place them i've already pressed the darts and basically all you did with this pocket on the top was fold it in 
You can see that is there. I've surged the edge and I folded that in and sewed that first and then folded the raw edges in like that. Pretty structured fabric, easy to work with. I'm going to be sewing this on using a twin needle and I'm just going to have a bit of extra precaution at these little corners in the way I'm going to do that with the twin needle. You could use a shallow zigzag and it would look like a straight stitch and sew that on. You do want something that is going to have a little bit of a stretch because when you wear your pants this is going to stretch in every direction because it's a knit. When I get to a little corner, I just lift my needle just enough so that I can move the fabric underneath. And then I put my presser foot down and find the exact place where I want to put the needle back in again. And then I keep going. Two needles there, so you can't really pivot as when you have a single needle. I want to show you how the finished pocket looks like so we know what we're going to accomplish. Here is a little welt pocket opening and we put our hand in there and we have a pocket because at the back I have already placed the pocket bag and just lined it up on the leg and hand basted it across. Over here you can see some sewing that's going to happen later, fixing that welt piece onto parts of this pocket bag and that actually closes it up here on the side so you don't have a hole this way. You can see there's some top stitching around this rectangle and it's all very neat, all very stable. Remember, this area is interfaced a little larger than where we cut into. So it's a really nice stable pocket opening. I would never use it, I'll never put things in there. I'm just sewing this because it's pretty. <laughs> but let's see on the other side how easy it is to do. I'm gonna start on my well pocket opening. What we essentially had to do was mark this rectangle on top of the interfaced area that's right underneath and then sew a rectangle right there. I find it really hard to mark accurately and I've been using my actual pattern piece for years. <laughs> so I have no problems with printing this page again. It's just one extra page when I want to make this again. No drama. So I've just hand basted my paper down right on top of the interfacing. Remember this is actually the pattern piece that you use to cut the interfacing. And now I'm just going to sew around the rectangle right there. I find sewing on the top of the paper super practical, super easy. What I did with this other one was just make a duplicate. I just traced it onto another regular piece of paper and hand basted it. And you can see I have already sewn that there. On this side, you will see the stitching. And this will actually be the guide for you to place the actual work piece. So it does have to match your fabric. As you can see, I've chosen that beige. You're not going to be removing this, so make sure it's the same color. You want to start somewhere around the middle, not in a corner, and you want to shorten your stitch length. And because we've used such a tiny stitch length, the paper is just going to rip off super easily. I find it's just going to come out and we can easily just rip it out like this all the way around and get rid of it. So I find this really fun. <laughs> and then we still have paper in the center and look, it comes flying off. After sewing a little rectangle, I've just pulled this little middle bit right there, poked a pin through the fabric right on these points and I made a mark underneath. So I'm just going to draw a line from that dot to that dot so I can cut through it. There are other little marks that go like this, but I'm not going to worry about those. I'm just going to cut those little corners later, but for now I want to open up this middle section. I would rather snip into the corners after I have my welt piece on. This is the hip right here. Here we have the crotch curve. On the side that's coming this way, not the side closest to the hip, that's where we're going to align the welt piece. So I have already pressed it lengthwise like this and remember we just cut into there. I align the raw edges of my welt against that raw edge that I just cut out and I'm gonna have a bit of overhang on both sides 
in relation to the little rectangle stitching that we did there. So here is my rectangle and we have a little excess here and over on the other side. There's a stitching and it's overhanging over there as well. So I'm just going to align these really nicely. So that's not going to move. I'm going to give it a quick hand baste so that it's nice and secure. I don't really want to work with the pins there. Okay, I had left you there with pins. Now I have some hand basting to hold that in place. And now from this side, we're going to flip it. And we have a little rectangle that we'd sewn originally. So what we're going to do is sew from corner to corner, reinforcing there on each corner. And that's going to fix our work piece in place. Remember over here we have all raw areas here and the folded edge of the well is towards this side. Make sure you get that correct and don't end up placing that folded edge over here. I'm going to reinforce at each corner right here. And now that I've got this well on, you can see on this side, now I'm going to be happy to cut into these corners right here. Clip right there as close as you can without going through the seam and over here on this side as well. What we want to do is turn the well inside. So because we've cut into here, we can just push all of this inside like this. This is the hip area, this is loose. This is the edge that's just been sewn. We want that seam allowance of the welt piece going down like that or nice and extended. We wanna keep it like that. I'm actually gonna put a little pin to hold it right there. And then over here, we just wanna flip this like this and we're going to expose that little triangle and everything just needs to be nice and straight. And what I want to do now is sew that little triangle down. I'm gonna put a pin through here and just sew right on top of where we have that seam that we already done. See, right there. You can see that closes up the side of the welt. So now we have a seam closing it there and then this is closed as well. And now on the other side, it's the same thing. I'm gonna lay this nice and flat and just move the pant up and it's going to expose the triangle right there. And that's exactly where I want to sew. There we go. And now we have closed our welt pocket on the bottom edges of the rectangle. This is still loose. Now what I want to do now is top stitch this bottom edge from here to there and I'm not going to back tack, I'm going to pull the threads to the other side and then this little bit right there I'm going to top stitch at the end once we have the pocket bag that goes behind it sewn on. Make sure the seam allowance of the welt is going this way. When you look at it from this side it's all extended like that. I'm just going to edge stitch the long end of the rectangle. This is all just done with a straight stitch. So there is that edge stitching on the long end that's fixed that in place that's how it looks like on the other side and now I'm just going to pull these threads to the back and knot them okay so we have this partially done we still have this little bit to fix and we're going to do that by putting the pocket bag behind it now this is the pocket bag it's got a shorter end and a longer end the shorter curved edge is the one that's going to match your hip curve right there. You need the right side of the fabric facing up because when you put your hand in your pocket, you want the main fabric to show right there. Now you want to align everything here at the waist and at the hip first. I'm going to put a pin here on the corner, make sure that aligns. Now this that's loose right here, you want to fold it in and you have that stitching guide to help you fold that in like this. And it's going to reach the edge of your welt piece. So it's going to be nice and snug right there against it. And so while keeping that there, I'm just going to put a pin over here to keep this pocket in place without moving, but below the welt. And basically what needs to happen now, you're going to bring this over and you're going to expose that. That hasn't been sewn. And now this is what we're going to sew onto the pocket piece right there along this long edge. And that's how we're going to fix this part of the pocket in place. So I'm just going to put a few pins here. Remember we have that guide stitch that we did at the beginning that's going to help us sew really neatly. Always make sure you, you don't catch your welt when you're doing this piece, so just move it out of the way. <laughs> Okay, that has been sewn, it's fixed in place right here. Now when you flip this over, that's closed this edge of the welt pocket, so it's not longer open like it used to be. And then this edge of the welt reaches right there. Now to finish closing all of this, because it's still all open over here, 
Now is when I'm going to top stitch the short ends of the rectangle and that's going to catch all the layers and fix the well in place. And now I'm going to reach the stitch I've done previously here. And again, I'm not back tacking there. I'm just going to push that in and it will look in the end like I did this continuously. At this stage, the welt pocket is done. That little seam caught all the layers and closed it off through there. So there's no gaping holes anywhere. All you have is your pocket entrance and your pocket bag. Now I'm at the same stage I was over here. I just need to finish hand basting that. And from this side, there's many ways you can sew this down. You can use a twin needle. You know, there is a little corner here. I'm just gonna be using a narrow zigzag and that's gonna be it. That's how I'm gonna fix it down. It'll be pretty discreet. And I'm gonna do it from the wrong side so I can see what I'm doing. One of my back legs I've got on the table. Here's the other one. The patch pockets are already on there. Once the pockets are in, it's sort of the home stretch. <laughs> You can sew the inseams, sew the side seams and have two separate legs and then put one in, in leg inside the other and then sew the crotch seam. Then I'll sew on my yoga waistband and do my hem and I'll be done. This won't take long after you've done all the pocket business. This is my test garment. You already saw a little try on that I did in my sewing room. I was so happy with the fit. You know, I get a lot of questions about fitting knit pants. You can't just do the same process as you usually do with woven pants because the woven pants don't have stretch vertically or horizontally. <laughs> so the measurements that you get on your body compared to the pattern can be pretty exact. You can pretty much predict how that's gonna fit on the body. But it's not the same with knit fabrics because they always have different properties. Some stretch more, some stretch less, some have more vertical stretch than others. So you can't just measure the pattern, do the whole process the same as you would. I would be much more conservative with knit patterns, with knit pants. For example, if I measured the back crotch here on these, I, I run about an inch short if I compare it to a woven pant, but then it fits absolutely fine, so I don't need to adjust. Same as the front, you always find that knit pants have a shorter crotch in the front and the back when you measure them. The best way to know is just to make a test pair with a fabric that's similar to the one you're gonna make for knit styles, and that's always gonna give you a better indication of the fit rather than just blindly doing this and this adjustment because it's just harder to predict. I find knit pants a little harder in that sense, but then they're usually just easier to fit anyway. You have usually less fitting problems. I did not feel like this was a waste of time. I was hoping they were gonna be wearable, so I cut them at a length that I know is wearable for me. This is an eight inch inseam, which is a little above my knees, my favorite length for shorts. When I was younger, in my teens, I used to wear really short shorts, like four inch. I don't do that anymore. <laughs> so I'm, that's what I love the most about sewing. I can choose the lengths that I like and the styles and just get the garments to fit like I want to. So that's great. And this was just a little piece of leftover knit, athletic knit that I had in my stash, not enough to make any pockets or anything like that. So this was just to test the fit. You can see the dots there. I did add a yoga waistband and these are just amazing. I was so happy with the feet. You know, I was 100% confident to cut into my lovely leopard print <laughs> and I knew that they were gonna fit and I wasn't gonna ruin that fabric. So don't shy away from making a test pair. It's so easy to whip up a pair of shorts. It takes up no fabric and it'll give you much more information than trying to rationalize the process because it's just different with knit pants. It's not the same as with woven. So I have styled these up because why not? I'm gonna be wearing them and they are such a great basic. I did not have a pair of knit pants like this that are short. So yeah, I know I'm gonna be making a bunch of these. Woo! If you've seen my bee attack a couple of years ago, there was a bee like right here, right now. It flew away, thankfully. <laughs> Let's see these ones start up. I'm happy with them. I'm so happy. I know I'm going to be making much more of these and these were just great. Not a waste of time at all. <laughs> this is my Ocean Days shirt from Pattern Emporium I made a few months ago at my parents' house. This pattern is also on sale while the pants are on sale. It's a chiffon, it's super relaxed, easy fit, drop shoulder, it's very striking, lots of colors in this print. The background of this very colorful print is navy, so I think my navy shorts, wearable muslin, work really well. I have a navy cami just to keep it toned down because the blouse is so loud. But my walk boldly shorts hack is a basic and it's gonna serve me so well. 
and I didn't have a pair of really comfortable knit shorts like this so I'm happy I filled this little gap in my wardrobe and I'm glad the muslin turned out wearable because it's just great I'm gonna really enjoy these and I love this length I also have a yoga waistband in here I think they look great they fit great and it was not a waste of time because I got a wearable pair I don't have any pockets on the front or the back it is a super duper casual relaxed look with my walk boldly shorts this pattern is also on sale while the pants are on sale this fabric is an athletic fabric it's wicking it's light it feels like I've got nothing on that's the feeling from the shirt and also the pants fresh air coming in everywhere these are all athletic knits so they don't make me hot and I feel so comfortable I could go on an excursion like to the waterfalls like I did a few weeks ago in this outfit and be very comfortable with my white sneakers. If I wanted to take away the looseness a little bit, <laughs> I would do a side tuck. I like a side tuck, I, I do use that and I think it looks a little different. I could just wear it loose, it just depends on how I feel. Here's another casual way I'm going to wear these shorts. I bought this t-shirt months ago. You'll see the details up close, so it's actually knitted. There's no way I can replicate this with fabric. Just very casual, very comfortable. And I've combined them with teal accessories, which is not a typical combination, but they're both cool colors. So I think they go really well and I love the color teal. So why not bring an unusual color out here? <laughs> No pockets, oh well, I'll survive. <laughs> I always have a handbag, always, always, always. I don't leave the house without one. So I don't need pockets. You will see pockets in my actual pants, the real ones. This was just a test garment and it's so wearable. Here are my gorgeous Walk Boldly leopard print pants. I'm glad I took the chance on this print because I've been known to say a couple of years ago, I'll wear a bit of animal print here and there, but I will never wear them on my pants. Well, usually things we say that are bold and I'll never do that. Yeah, it, sometimes things change a few years down the line. And I've had to convince myself and look at this fabric for a very long time. I bought it ages ago, but actually these type of tones don't suit me that much because they're warm colors and I have a sort of a cool undertone. But if something doesn't really suit you that much, you can just wear pants or a skirt and you'll be absolutely fine. And I love the neutral tones. I think it is a pretty leopard print. I like that the tones are too orange, so they're more sort of a beige and tan. I love it. Here is my welt pocket. You saw how to do that on the channel. It was a very fun process. It didn't take that long at all to do and it's very firm, very neat. Little pocket bag is sewn behind there, so that was easy. And it's bulk free, which I like. That's what I like the most about these pockets. There are, other, other, there are other options, you know, you can put a patch pocket here or a jean style that has a curved opening. So there's always so much you can do. I did a back patch pocket on the back, which is hard to see, but it is there. I thought, why not? <laughs> you can also do a work pocket here, which is not the exact same technique. Although some of the principles always stay the same as cutting into the corners and sewing little triangles, but the way that it's sewn is different because the actual welt piece is the same as the pocket bag, so it's a little different. And I've done that on woven pants before, the exact same technique. I sewed it for my husband a few years ago. I made him a pair of dress pants. I've also sewn that same technique on a jacket. So I'm aware, I know the technique. So it's super easy to do, but I didn't have time in this opportunity to make a second pair. I run out of hours, <laughs> but I'm happy with these. I know I'm gonna make another pair. I already chose the fabric for a second pair. It's gonna be a cotton lycra that looks like denim in black. I have quite a lot of yardage and I think that would be a really great basic. I love the feet. No changes to the feet at all. Sewing that muslin was not a waste of time for me because I got a wearable pair. As you saw, I could wear that so many ways these are the real ones and they are just amazing they're wide but not that wide they're less wide than other pants i've made from pattern emporium i sort of think they're in between and i've got a nice hem allowance there this is such a great fabric for it nice and weighty nice and structured they press really well they feel amazing it's an athletic knit so it's not going to make me hot it's performance fabric so it wicks away heat and sweat and all of that and i love that for pants and i love these I do have a yoga waistband instead of the original waistband that is only a little narrower than this and has a one and a half inch elastic inside. That is the original pattern. I just like yoga waistbands 
and I put them on woven things, I put them on neat things. I just find them so comfortable and they don't need an elastic inside. They're just a little smaller, but they hold up and it feels like you're wearing nothing. And I do want to feel that. I want to feel like I'm wearing nothing, nothing tight at the waist, you know. I can't stop sewing yoga waistbands. All of the seams inside were done with the serger, all the main seams, you know, after doing the pockets, the process after that took literally about half an hour. And if you don't want to do this, then do the easier patch pockets or the jean pockets or no pockets at all. <laughs> I've had fun styling them in, a, in sort of more traditional ways with the color combinations. And on some, I sort of went another way with another color, but let's just see. <laughs> These are my gorgeous Walk Boldly pants from Pattern Emporium. This is a size 18, no fitting modifications at all. And I have the toe length on the leg. Love it so much. This is an athletic knit. Up closer, you'll see some pocket details. And I'm just so happy with the fit. So comfortable, fitted at the waist and hips, but then wider at the bottom. I think it's a perfect balance. I've got very walkable heels and a very casual outfit. I've got my one shoulder tank from Pattern Emporium and I could be out fresh like this all day and feel amazing. The pants, of course, are the star of the show here. So just keeping everything <laughs> black on the top and everywhere else. This is a flowy top, but it's not too long. And because the pants are still fitted in this area, I think it's fine. You don't have to always wear something fitted when you wear wider pants like this, especially if the fit at this area is nice and smooth and fitted. I've actually put on my own yoga waistband here with the same athletic knit. I do have negative ease here. That means I don't need an elastic inside and it keeps the pants up. This is hitting my natural waist right there. You can see the crotch on the front fits perfect. This is the front welt pocket. This is the pocket opening right here. I did in a contrast quite a lycra. Put my hand in there. The pocket bag is sewn onto the front leg. At the back, you see my waist is exactly where it has to be there. There's darts to give shaping and some patch pockets there. Sewn on, twin needles so they can stretch and move with you and I'm really happy with the fit. But let's just be real and live our lives tucked out because that's how I'm comfortable. <laughs> I'm so happy I chose this print. I've had it for ages and I really love the neutral shades here. I'm gonna see if I'm brave enough to style this with another color and see this leopard print sort of like a neutral. If I do put other colors on here, they will always be solids. I've been known to say I would never wear leopard print pants a couple of years ago, but here we have it. I am wearing them and I'm loving them. <laughs> here are my leopard pants, a little bit dressed up. Gorgeous heels. I got the length right to wear this with a two to a three inch heel, which is what I usually wear. I've got a tight beige colored cami underneath and a linen layer. This is usually how I like to dress. And I think this is great. Star of the show here are the pants, of course. So everything else is pretty toned down and I feel great like this. This top hits just below the waistband, so I think it's good. It's fitted, so it gives you some definition for the waist where it is. And it's not like I'm drowning in fabric on the top and then this layer is just semi-fitted. Right length there to not be too long for a wide leg style. This is a refashioned linen top I made a few years ago that I reshaped to me. Also because this layer is not too long, you can partially see the welt pocket there, which I always want to show off because it's so pretty. Outfit is so comfortable and I would totally wear it out like this, exactly like this. This is my ballad blouse from Love Notion, just a little longer and according to how I feel on the day, I might wear it just out and just be all loose and fine like this. I don't follow all the fashion rules, but it's long enough for me to be able to tie it up in a little knot if I want to. I've just combined it here with gold leather accessories. Okay, so I've strayed from black to style these pants. I've pulled out a dark purple. It might look a little lighter on screen, but it's a really nice dark purple that suits me. And because the colors on the pants are pretty neutral, I think this could work. At least it works for me and I feel good like this. I know color combinations are something that's super personal, but this calls to me and I'm ready for another casual day in my walk boldly leopard pants. This is a semi-fitted knit top called Zakopane from Itch to Stitch. And I don't feel it's too tight as well. I, I feel comfortable that I can live my life like this.
what about this this is so comfortable i've strayed away from the typical colors and i've just pulled out this burgundy sweater and i think the tones in the pants can go with a lot of solids on the top and this is great super comfy lounging walking around all day whatever and i've got white sneakers underneath I think it's a really cool sporty vibe and I'm all in. I love my Walk Boldly pants. <laughs> they are amazing. I know I'm going to be making more. I know the fit is there. I know how much fabric I need. I love how they feel. They're just so amazing. I really enjoyed it. It was stress-free. If you've been watching my content just recently, you know, I've been making some really involved things and I'm actually making something pretty involved right now and I sewed these pants just in the middle of all these other projects and they were just so relaxing and so enjoyable. An easy win, as I say, it's really hard to fail with these patterns and I always get a really great experience and a very wearable garment, so that makes me really happy and I'm always happy to recommend them to you because of that. Remember to check out the sale. It's until Monday noon, but in Australia, 15% off the Walk Boldly pants, plus a lot of other patterns. You'll see them on the release page there. All the links are down below in the description and the pinned comment. And that is all from me. I will see you again with more sewing very soon. Bye.